you can't love God naturally. It takes a supernatural empowerment to truly love God the way he should be loved. There is what is called the spirit of love. And that's why I'm sharing this message because I want that spirit to come upon you. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 1.7, I think it is, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, one, love, two, sound mind, three. So there's what is called the spirit of love. That spirit of love, Romans 5.5, 5, is shared abroad in our hearts. How? By the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit can spread the spirit of love. My desire is for the spirit of love to fall upon you. Whenever you are in the presence of greatness, you should desire for that person in greatness to tell you the biggest secret. You just want to cut through all the nonsense and just cut to the chase and get to the real deal. So in Matthew 22, they say to Jesus, Master, which is the greatest commandment? I know you share a lot of things, but what's a priority? What should I focus on? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. How can I make everything in my life work? Love the Lord your God. True power in the kingdom is not a product of God loving you. No. We have made that mistake. True power power in the kingdom is a product of you returning that love to God. Many people, they complain, why is this not happening for me? Why is that not happening for me? If God really loves me, why am I broke? Why am I being afflicted? Why are there these issues? Because they don't understand what I'm about to teach you. That real results in God's kingdom are a product of you loving God, not God loving you. He says, this is the first and greatest commandment. What is to love God? To love God is to have a God first mentality. Giving is good. Tithing is good. But is it the first thing you do when you receive money? Many people are not receiving results from their tithe because the tithe is an afterthought if there is change. There's a difference between tithing when... when between when tithing is the first thing you do when you receive money and tithing somewhere along the way. Whoever you love is first in your life. Don't tell me you love God if God is not first. What is love? Loving God is prioritizing God. What is loving God? It's a kingdom priority lifestyle. If you truly love God, you can't fail on planet earth. When you truly love God, you become a star. In the kingdom. There is no lover of God in the Bible. That did not shine. Who are these that shine? Who are these that rise like stars? Who are these? Isaiah 60 verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. By loving God. A little one shall become a thousand. You can equal to a nation. You. You. By yourself. When you really fall in love with God. God does not trust people that don't love him. And empowerment in the kingdom is an entrustment, not an achievement. Proverbs 23, 26. One of the greatest scriptures in that whole Bible of yours. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. If you want to make a mark on earth, give God your heart. The greatest offering you can give God is your heart. If you give God your heart, your money will follow where your heart is. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You can give to manipulate. You can give to gain favor. The greatest dimension of giving must be love motivated. Not harvest driven. No. So if I give out of love, 
I'm giving from an empowerment position. Your optimum harvest will come when it is love driven. When your seed is love driven. Though I give my goods to the poor, 1 Corinthians 13, and have no charity, it profits me nothing. So I don't get my real harvest if my giving is not love driven. Giving, in most cases, is proof of love. For God so loved the world, he didn't sing in heaven, he gave. Anyone who's not a giver is not a lover. Men will use anyone and anything to their advantage including God. In God's kingdom, in the church, we have many God users, but very few God lovers. If you are still looking just to get things from God, you have not started your kingdom journey. You are still a child. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I stopped looking for what God can do for me. And I started looking for what I can do for God. I stopped focusing on God loving me and started focusing on me loving God. So the body of Christ is not producing results because they are not loving God. A God lover is very rare in the kingdom. God loving me is a given. Me loving God is a decision. Have you decided to love God? God wants a relationship. In fact, a marriage with you but many people are looking for a one night stand and in the morning just pay me God is saying fellowship Kononia, I want to know you you say no I want what's in your hand God sought for a man there was a king on the throne but he was looking for another king while there was a king on the throne God saw but God was still looking is God still looking for someone to do what you are doing if your heart is not right towards God Get ready for replacement. Real impact. I'm not talking of breakthroughs. Real impact cannot be made in God's kingdom if you don't love him. Do you really love God? God is looking for true worshippers. Not breakthrough hungry people. True worshippers. Why do you want to prosper? Motive is always more powerful than action. God is interested in why you are doing what you are doing. Not just what you are doing. Why do you want to prosper? Why do you want more money? If the reason is not so that you can love God with the resources, get ready for limited resources. Oh, I love this God more than silver and gold, more than riches and gold, more than gold and diamonds. I love this God. Oh, God knows I love him. The zeal of God, Psalm 69 verse number 9, has consumed me. My focus is the things of God. Where do you invest your time and your money? Shows us where your love and your passion is. First Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon prospered. He became the greatest on the whole earth on this one truth. He had all wisdom. He had all wealth. Today we are struggling to beat Solomon financially. Based on not on his giving. No, on his love. Which drove his giving. When you love God, God gives you things. When you love things, you have to fight for things. First Kings chapter 11. And Solomon loved many strange women. What did he do? He went and he withdrew his love from God. And he deposited it in many strange women. He relocated his love from God to women. Question, where has your love gone to since it's not in God? Many men love men united more than God. Men united, they can go. You know, that singer, this is home. Bora. Wanting to get one leather round object into a net at all costs has consumed your zeal. Thank God for soccer. Soccer is a religion in the United Kingdom. And the players are demigods. There are many who worship Lionel Messi. That love you have for Lionel Messi is supposed 
supposed to be put towards God. He can't heal you. He can't deliver you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't want to know you. But the God, not only does he know the number of hairs you have on your head, he has numbered the hairs on your head. He sent Jesus to die for you on the cross of Calvary as proof of his love. How can you love a mortal man, Lionel Messi, more than Jesus? Mercy is not a messiah. I enjoy watching Lionel Messi. Not to take time out from God to watch Lionel Messi. He was sold for so, so, so many millions of US dollars. Uh -huh. Did you get a portion? When I love God, my portion on planet Earth is guaranteed. Eye has not seen. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men that things prepared for those who love God. When you love God, he has prepared blessings waiting for you. While others are seeking things, God has prepared things for you. He will put it in your hands when you love him. The qualification for greatness in the kingdom is loving God. It's loving God. It's what qualifies you. Oh, when you don't love God, you are disqualified from greatness. I, the Lord, Jeremiah 17, 10, I search their hearts. There's a pe peculiar group of people that God is looking for. He's looking for those whose hearts are upright towards him. Those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Put it up there. That he may show himself strong on their behalf. Not because they asked, but because they loved him. <laughs> the eyes of the Lord, 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9, run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Pastor Mike, this kind of people are rare. People whose hearts are perfect or loyal towards him. People who genuinely love God. I mean, give these people are so rare that God is actually looking. Huh. There's two times I've seen in the Bible where God was looking for people. Number one, he's looking for people whose hearts are loyal towards him. Number two, he's looking for people who can stand in the gap. And I said, Lord, connect the two for me. He said, yes, son, that, those verses are very connected. Because if you truly love God, you want to stand in the gap for his children so that they are not destroyed. You will not be amongst those who stand and speak against God's children. You will be amongst those who stand and say, God, I know, please, Lord, wait. I know this person is messed up, but Jehovah God, in your judgment, remember mess. No, do not strike them, Lord. Do not allow them to perish. And the Lord said to me this morning, just as I woke up, he said, son, you've got to catch this thing, that Moses failed to enter the promised land because he was angry with my people. Ay, 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 ay. Who are you to be angry with God's children? This minister to me on a deep realm that I must not be angry with his children. Ay, 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 ay. I can miss the promised land as a man of God, depending on my attitude you towards God's children if pastors catch this thing you will love people you can't say you love God and hate his children why are you too quick to get angry at your spouse the last time I checked love is patient love is not easily hurt love is kind love does not keep a record of wrongs Love does not keep a record of wrongs. When you don't love people, God cannot truly empower you. 
Solomon, he loved God in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. But in chapter 4, it, it, it gives us the a chronicle of how God raised Solomon. But one of the things he said is Solomon had largeness of heart. A big heart is a mark of greatness. If you're a grudge keeper, God will not make you a king or he will not keep you a king. Because, listen to me, if you have power and you do not have a good heart, woe unto the people that follow you. They are already in trouble. God himself is love. So when you are a lover of God, you become a lover of people. You become a dispenser of the love of God. No love equals no church growth. Who wants to come to a place where there are hateful ushers? No love. I'm sorry, auntie. We are sweet. You have achieved the same goal. But how did you do it? No love. How do we grow the church? It's very simple. We just love people. Very, very simple. You have a neighbor who is not saved. You don't love them enough to bring them to church. For God so loved the world. You wanted people to be saved. You say you are a lover of God. But you don't love people enough to get them saved. Who has been saved through you this year? How do we grow a church? Very simple. By showing unsaved people acts of love. Full stop. Do you know you actually absolutely lose nothing by paying for the 4,000 other TGS groceries? How much food do you eat the whole day? Ah, you are keeping the money for yourself. How much food can you eat the whole day? But there's someone who's hungry. Who, if you go and buy them food, that is the first Jesus they will meet. Ah, why are you doing this? Because I love God and I love people. There are many tongues in church. Do you mean those who under? <laughs> But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, tongues will fail. <laughs> but love will never fail. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. Love never fails. Farai, if you are failing, check your love walk. Because love never fails. A true lover of God never fails. It won't fail. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, those are not the guys. They will fail. Whether they be tongues, dimi, heavy. They are not even tongues. Tongues. Heavy tongues. Gododo, bololo, bushelidi, vivivi, kududu, jijiji. Dimi, heavy, dimi. They will fail. Whether they be tongues, they will fail. They will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Hey, those are Zakawanda, Shapira. But love. At the beginning of that verse, never fails. Love will make you failure proof. I said, Love will make you failure proof. You can't fail in ministry if you love people, you can't fail in business if you love people. The greatest business ideas are problem, are, are problem solving business ideas, not money making ideas, problem solving ideas, and it takes love to solve the problems of humanity. Do you love people? Why are you so hateful? Love is patient. Love is forgiving. I'm going to get back, to, back at you. Love does not seek vengeance. That's why God says, no, your heart cannot handle vengeance. Vengeance, leave it to me.
You might not like what I'm sharing, but I'm, I'm, I'm rescuing your destiny. You are just one moment away from greatness. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Jonathan Butler said that's the greatest decision that I have ever made. First John chapter 4 verse 16 to 18. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is what? Love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Uka garamurudo uno garamuna mwari mwarivo garamamuri. When you love God and you love his people, you are a candidate for the supernatural. You will do supernatural business naturally. You enter the class of God when you love people like God because God is love. So when I love people, I am like God. Become an addicted lover of people. They will wrong you. That's why they are called people. So I become like God when I walk in love. As he is, so are we. I work miracles like Jesus when I walk in love. True anointing is not a product of going to the mountain to pray. No. True anointing, genuine, authentic anointing is a product of love. Jesus Christ moved with compassion, went about doing good, healing all, not some, all that were oppressed by the devil. So when you are a lover of God, you heal all people in your service. Not only that, you go and you do good. Why? You go and you do exploits. Why? You are a lover of God. May you be a lover of God. As Jesus is, so shall you be. I said, as Jesus loves, so shall you love. Can you imagine somebody offended Jesus when he was on the cross, right on the cross? And he said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. On the cross, and you know what you say? You don't know what they did to me. No. They don't know what they are doing. But you who knows what you are doing, forgive those who are doing what they don't know that they are doing. Forgiveness is a big idea for big people. Small-minded people don't forgive. Joseph he went to the top. He was now in charge of the food. His family that offended him, that sold him out, that left him for dead, came for the food. They thought that he was going to work against them because of the grudge. Because they thought that he would do what they would do. They didn't understand that he was a different breed. He embraced them. He embraced them. He didn't reduce who he was. If you forgive, God will empower you. The Bible says, and we know that you have passed from death to life because you love the brethren. Not because you're in the choir. No, because you love the brethren. Not because you're a preacher. No, because you love the brethren. Not because the brethren are doing good things. You need to love the unlovely. Who is a lover of God? Someone who goes out of the way for their God and for God's people. Are you willing to be inconvenienced for people you love? Who is a God lover? Someone who's obsessed by kingdom agenda. Until God becomes your obsession, you're not really in love. They are undercover Christians. <laughs> What's, give me Psalm 109 verse 46. Listen to this. The more people rise up in society, look at me, the more people rise up in society, the more they meet other people who are high up in society and most of them are not saved. Am I right? So when people do that now, they then hide their Christianity. Anthony David, I will speak your testimonies also before other kings and I am not ashamed. Why? Because another millionaire joined you. 
So you are hiding your God. Paul, an addicted lover, said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> Why are you ashamed of your God? You don't really love him. Don't be ashamed of your God if you really love your God. I hear the Lord saying, do not allow trouble to separate you from your God. Romans 8 verse 35. What shall separate us from the love of God? This is Paul. An addicted lover of God. He says, neither height nor depth. I'm not going to be separated from God because I have a house in Borodo Brook. No, I'm not going to be separated from my God because look at my church. Height nor depth. No principalities. No witchcraft. You need to rise up and say, Though he slay me, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Though I'm going through trouble, my trouble is temporary, but my God is permanent. Hallelujah. I will not allow temporary inconvenience to make me sin. Even if I'm angry at my situation, I'll never be angry at my God because he is the only solution I have. How can I be angry at the solution provider? I love this God. Through trouble, I love him. Through sickness and disease, I love him. Even if he never heals my leg, he is still my God. I've been struggling with my left leg for years but I've never loved God any less because he has not healed the leg. God, if you heal me, you are God. Even if you don't heal me, you are still God. Listen to what the Hebrew boys said. They said, King, we are not careful to answer you because the God whom we serve, he shall deliver us. That is love. But listen to passion for God. And they said, even if he does not deliver us, he is still my God. Whether I have US, do US dollars or not, He is God. Money in my pocket, He is God. No money, He is God. Breakthroughs, He is God. No breakthrough, He is still God. Contracts, He is God. No contracts, He is still God. Whether my family lives or dies, He is still God. Whether He saves me or not, He is still God. He is God all by Himself. So my love for Him is not dependent on what He can do. God is not Father Christmas. There are people who have forsaken God because a loved one died. A loved one died. So you allow the death of someone to separate you from God. You're joking. He is still God. Jesus died. If Jesus died, who's your relative? Because when someone dies, people, they, the devil messes with the minds of people. He begins to whisper, if God really loves you, why did this one die? But Jesus died. I love God. I love him with everything that I have. I love him with my whole being. I love him. I don't love my children more than God because I need God to look after those children. There's a name of Jehovah that you don't know. It's called Elkanah. E-L stroke K-A-N-A. -N Elkanah. Do you know who that God is? The jealous God. The first God, the jealous God will fight anything that you put above him. Even if he gave it to you, he will fight it. God gives you a husband and you put that marriage above God. God, not the devil, will fight that marriage. If you are dating a guy, hello, and that guy now starts talking to another girl, are you not going to fight that relationship? What is your motive? Jealousy. Jealousy fights things. I refuse for God to fight my business because I love my business more than God. I refuse for God to fight my finances because I love money more than God. Relocate your love from US dollars to God. I love cars. I love cars. Anyone who's been close to me even for a week knows I love cars. So when God wants me to prove my love for him, when I start falling in love with the car, he says, put it on the altar. That car is about to replace me. I will never allow an S-Class. I will never allow an autobiography. I will never allow a Porsche Cayenne to replace my God. I will never allow even the new Lexus to replace
replace my car. I need God more than that car. So I will put him in his place. He, in his preeminence. He is first. He is in a class all by himself. He is my God. Whether there's COVID or no COVID, he is still God. I love him. Whether I'm healed or I'm sick, I love him. Whether things are working or not working, I will still love my God. Devil, you thought you could remove my love for God. You are lying. You are choking. Nothing shall separate me from the love of my God. Oh, I love him. I want you to relocate your heart back to God. Your heart must pen for him. Your heart must search for him. Somebody shout, I love God. Shout it. Shout, I love my God. Shout, I love my God. Please be seated. First Chronicles 29 verse number 3 David the lover of God he tells us why he gave God he says moreover listen to the reason remember the motive is always more important than the action because I have set my affection are you affectionate towards the house of God because of my affection on the house of my God never mind God affection for his house because the house of God is an extension of God when you love God you will take money you are supposed to spend on something else and give it to God for a kingdom agenda you are saying that is not important God you are more important you don't rise because God loves you otherwise you would have risen by now you rise because you love God when you love God God will pick you from the crowd. Melissa, come here. Come here. From a whole crowd of people. Do you know what God told me? He said, when you are my lover, there are things that I'll give you, even if you don't fast. He's my child. So because I love her, she didn't ask for it, but I'll just put this in your hands. So there are things that God will just do for you. There are things God will just do. I prepare that for her why I thought of her before this moment is God thinking of you it's not about location there are people right in the front here but I picked her from the back they were David's brothers Samuel had come to Jesse's house and he tried to make one of them king and what did God say God said no. He had to ask, is there yet another one? Because there's yet but one. Where is he? He's at the backside of the desert. What is he doing? He is tending my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Look after my sheep. How many sheep have you told about Jesus this week? Crucifix. God said to me, it's not just about soul winning, but there's also soul establishment. How many people have been strengthened in the word? There are souls that are about to give up on life. Maybe all they just needed was $20 from you. Meanwhile, you had $300 in your wallet, but you said, mm, you walked away from an opportunity to show love. Lovers of God distribute on behalf of heaven. And they can be trusted because they love people more than money. Listen to me. You are not paid for acts of love the day you act out the acts of love. Another day you will be paid. And not necessarily from that person. Am I helping you? Don't only help people who can help you in the future. If I help Pastor Rage and I'm expecting my harvest from Pastor Rage, I've limited my harvest to Pastor Rage. I help Pastor Rage and the God of Heaven chooses out of the 7 billion people on planet earth who will give me my harvest I leave it to God do you know why you have grudges with people you help them, they didn't help you back don't hold people to grudges simply because they didn't return the favor you gave them maybe God will use another person don't hold grudges on people who are still growing in the faith forgive them, they don't know what they are doing Oh Lord Jesus, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. While Jesus was dying on the cross for people, those people were stoning him. 
And Jesus knew that he would not make it to heaven if he didn't forgive them. That's why on the cross, before he died, he made sure. He said, Lord, I'm interceding for them. Can you imagine? When you're a real man of God, God will make you intercede for people who despise you. When you're a lover of God, God gives you unending breakthroughs. Unending breakthroughs. Why? Let me demystify a mystery for you, Albert. Why are you open to unending breakthroughs when you're a lover of God? Because when you're a lover of God, like the Apostle Paul, God will entrust you with mysteries. Mysteries are given, not looked for. They are given. Hans Napoleon, because of the abundance of revelation given to me, he didn't look for it. God gave it to him. So when you're a lover of God, there are secrets that God gives you. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. The secret things belong to our Father. But they can be revealed, given to you on a silver platter. So when you love God, God gives you mysteries. And we rise by revelation in the kingdom. We rise by mysteries in the kingdom. So God gives you revelation. Marketplace revelation. Economy solving ideas can be given to you. Why? You become a lover of God. When you love God, he gives you secrets. Job rose by secrets. Job 29 verse 4. He says, when I was in my prime or in my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, he tells us how he rose. Job rose by kingdom secrets. You rise by secrets. And secrets are given to lovers. You don't give the combination to your safe to everyone because you love everyone. No. You give the, the combination to your safe to somebody who loves you because the one you love and they love you back, you trust them. So there are hidden things that God reveals to you and to me because we love God. When you love God, you are entrusted with the power of God. You are entrusted with the power of God. You are put in the class of Jesus. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Why? Why Paul? What shall separate me from the love of God? That's why Paul was given more power than the other disciples. And God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Acts 19 verse 11. So when you are a lover of God, you become a custodian of unusual power. Why? You are put in the class of Jesus. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Same class. So when you love God, you are entrusted with power. In Acts 14, after they saw what Paul did, they said, the gods have come down in the likeness of men. Put it up there. The gods have come down in the likeness of men. You can put together a transaction that they say only a God can do this. Where did it come from? What shall separate us from the love of God? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Can you see? Can you see? You can't be ashamed of someone you love. Paul was not ashamed. Paul said nothing will separate me from the love of God. You can beat me. You can throw me in jail. You can do whatever you want to do to me. But it's not going to separate me from loving God. So because of that, he was an addicted lover of God. So he was entrusted with power. Until you are a true lover of God, you are not entrusted with glory. You are not entrusted with power. You are not entrusted with wealth. You are not entrusted with wisdom. Ha. Do you know what is called power? They said about David. David, the lover of God, a man after God's own heart. Listen to what they say to him. They said, Master, you are more than 10,000 of us. Muri one. <laughs> and you are worth more than 10,000 of us. One person. So when you're a lover of God, your value increases. When you're a lover of God, your strength increases. They were wanting to kill David. They said, no, you can't go as a few people. You need a whole army to kill one person. That's power. That's power. Goliath was killed by David's love for God. <laughs> it's not David who killed Goliath. 
is the lover of David who is God that killed Goliath. Goliath did not know he was fighting a lover of God. Do you know what God called, what God called David? My servant. My servant. My servant. Do you know what David called God? Thou art my God. Psalm 63. Not our God. <laughs> you are my God. David was entrusted with mysteries. Songs we are still singing today. David was entrusted with those songs. While others were trying out gowns for kingship. David was at the backside of the desert. At the, of the desert. Lord, I love you. When I should try my crown, I was now so fake. Lord, I love you. Even if I don't become king, Lord, I love you. God is saying, Ah, don't want to go to a guy. And scutag, I'll go to a crown. Look at a guy, I'll go to a nini. I'll go to a guy. Mumwea, nemuzo kwadi. You have loved things too much. You have loved change of story too much. Love God. And God will supernaturally change your story. He says in Malachi chapter number 4. He says there will be a clear distinction between they that serve God and they that serve him not. A clear distinction. He says and they shall be mine. Mine. Wangu. Mine. They shall be my jewels. These are lovers of God. This is a, 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 a unique group of people that genuinely love God. Value God. Value his presence. Value your time with him. Look for him. Proof of passion is in pursuit. If you are passionate about someone, you pursue them. You look for them. You phone them. You hunt them down. Do you know how you can prove your love for God? Someone says, I want to do a transaction. Sunday morning, 8 a.m., you say, no, I'll be preparing for church. We can do the same transaction at 12. I won't take a chance with 11 because you know what? There might be a move of God, so I don't want to miss. Listen, so tell you what, we can still have the same discussion at 12. Try and do a deal with the Muslim on Friday. Anyway, worldwide, at 12 noon to 2 on a Friday. They're not interested. Everything you do, you are telling God a message. Be careful how you handle money. There are people who no longer come to church because of a job. You are telling heaven. The breakthrough you gave me has replaced you. It's small things. Small. We, don't think really, we don't really think deep about it. But you know the devil can separate you from God slowly. 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 So if I have assignments that need my attention, even on a Sunday, I would rather go to my workplace at 4 a.m. 4 to 7, I do whatever I was supposed to do. Between 9 and 12, time and end with church. I'm teaching you something, church. I'm teaching you to send the right signal to God. Send the right message to God. You are holding your tithe at home. Mageto Zimwa. You don't open the envelope. I can't touch this money. It's God's money. It's the holy tithe. Hakuna magets. Kuna wano gara kuriseva. Kusinaka na malai nezeza. It's temporary. I will never let anything mess up my relationship with God. When God becomes that important. Ha. Get ready. You will become a trailblazer. Get ready. You become a story changer. And the Lord said to me. He said when your love reaches an advanced stage. You move from being my lover to my friend. Your love can graduate to friendship. <laughs> Who is a friend of God? Abraham. The friend of God. God said, I can't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah before I talk to my friend. Friendship is a higher realm. Who is a friend? Someone you can tell. No longer do I call you servant. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. God 
trusts his friends with key information. <laughs> How can I make any money in this economy, Lord? Because you are my friend. Come here, come here, come here, come here. He whispers because he doesn't want everyone to hear. He whispers in the ear of his friend. Who do you spend time with? Your friend. No longer do I call you friend. Do I call you servant? You have graduated. I call you friend. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things I heard from the father I have made known to you. Ay, 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 ay. Scripture of the day. All things that I heard from the father I have made known to you. You didn't look for them. When you're a friend of Jesus, he gives you information. He looks for all the relevant information and he gives it to you. When there's an opportunity in the economy, who do you look for to give the opportunity? If your friend does not know about their opportunity, you will make it known to them. Meanwhile, there are other people handing in their documents. When you are a friend of God, you will be a marvel on planet Earth. When you are a friend of God, you will be the head and not the tail. When you are a friend of God, you will be above only and not beneath. When you are a friend of God, your struggles will come to an end. When God is your friend, get ready for heavenly resources. Get ready to be a peculiar person. Get ready to walk in the supernatural naturally because you are close to God. Your love for God is your ticket to greatness. And your love for souls is proof of your love for God. Lord, I love what you love. Why did Jesus come on planet earth? He came to seek and to save the lost. So that's what I invest my money in. That's what I invest my time in. So I'm interested in what he's interested in. Are you not interested in what your friend's interests are? Why are you friends with your friends? You share the same interests. You want to be a friend of God? Share his interests. He who wins souls is wise. Daniel 12 verse 3. Become a soul winner. Become a soul winner. An addicted soul winner. An addicted soul winner. An addicted soul establisher. Love the church enough to protect the church. When you speak against the church, you are fighting Jesus. Never call the church your church. Never call it your church. If it is your church, you are the one who will look out for the church. If it is your church, you are the one who will look out and make sure that you sort things out in the church. Jesus never promised to build your church. <laughs> and upon this rock, I, Jesus, will build my church. As long as it is his church, he will build it. So a church that belongs to the pastor will not grow. He said, I will build my church. If money is needed, I will bring the money to my church. Condition my church. Listen to what he said. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So that will be an attack free church. And standing there to defend the church is Jesus. Listen to me. Take the same methodology into your business. Lord, this is your business. I hand it over to you. Build the business. The business belongs to you. The problem is the word my. Today, the word my must get out of the way. When you say my, 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 and I, 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 you sound like Lucifer. I will be like the most high God. I will be worshipped. I, I, I. No. It is his church. It is his business. It is his family. They are his children. They are his resources. Just be a custodian and tell him, Lord, all this belongs to you. It's all yours. Forgive me forever calling it my. I want you to build it. The Bible says in 
Psalm 127 verse number 1 except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it may you honor God first may you seek him first may you give him first place may you put him first may you serve his interest first may you feed souls first I said to the Lord Lord why did you allow Peter the most controversial disciple to preach on the day of Pentecost one of the most significant days in the history of the whole kingdom you entrusted it to one man his name was Peter Peter preached on the day of Pentecost not innocent Andrew Peter Roman soldier cutting ear Peter Peter who argued with Jesus Peter who rebuked Jesus Peter who denied Jesus Peter Pedro Peter and my issues it's amazing how God is the God of the bad boys. Moses, a murderer, became a deliverer. There are some, still some people who were focused on his murders while he was delivering God's children. Paul, a Christian killer. That was mafia. Paul was mafia. He became the custodian of the mysteries of God. Why did God use Paul? Why did God use Peter? How many times did Jesus, was Jesus denied by Peter? Three times. That's why in the book of Luke 21, verse 15 to 17, Jesus asked Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you feed my flocks. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Feed my flocks. Why did Jesus ask him three times? He was trying to veto the three times that Peter had denied Jesus. So by the time we get to the day of Pentecost, Peter's sins were completely forgiven. His denying Jesus three times was vetoed by his love for God. So Peter was now an addicted lover of God. That's why Jesus says, go and call all the disciples and Peter. And Peter, student, opened his Bible on the day of Pentecost. While some were saying he denied Jesus. Let people speak of the negative things you have done in public. Because they don't know that in private, your heart yearns for him. Your soul longs for him. You have asked him to forgive you. You have asked him to create a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. In the private, you have fallen in love with him. You are like Abraham who lay down prostrate before God in private. And people don't know your private life with God. They don't know that God knows how much you love him. Peter! Do you love me more than this? May you love God more than mother and father. May you love God more than brother and sister. May you love God more than silver and gold. May you love God more than riches untold. May you love God more than cars and money. May you love God more than title deeds. May you love God more than fame. May you love God more than likes on the internet. May you love God more than things that people desire. May you love God beyond measure. May you love God more than your neighbor. May you love God God, more than those who are in charge may you be known as a lover of God may you be an addicted lover of God weaknesses or no weaknesses may you love God may God make a Paul out of you despite your past may you veto your past by your love for God may you give him your heart afresh Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul from today I will live for you every step that I take every moment that I'm awake oh Lord have your way in my life may I become a lover of God every head bowed down and every eye closed if you're here this morning and you want to rededicate your life to God and you want to tell him afresh that Lord today is the day I give you my heart 
I give you my heart. I give you my heart for the rest of my life. Yes, I might be born again, but I had not given you my heart. Yes, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I had not given you my heart. If I'm talking to you, I want you to stand up on your feet. And I want you to raise your hands to heaven. Raise your right hand to heaven and put your, in fact, raise your left hand to heaven and put your right hand on your heart. And you are going to make a confession that, Lord, I'm giving you my heart today afresh. Say, Lord Jesus, Father God, Holy Spirit, today I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I mean this prayer from the depth of my heart. From today, I make a commitment to be a lover of God. I will walk in love. I will love you, Lord, for the rest of my life. And I will show that love to you. I will prove that love to you. I will long for you. I will yearn for you. I will spend time in your presence. Lord Jesus, I need you to receive my heart. I want to be like Solomon who became great because he gave his heart to you. I want to be like David who became great because he was a man after your own heart. I want to be like Job who became the greatest in all of the East because of his love for you. I make that commitment that from today I'll be a friend of God like Abraham close to God a lover of God more than a lover of things that's my commitment unto you today I give you my life for the rest of my life I recommit my whole life to you this day in the name of Jesus clap your hands for Jesus while you're standing there's a scripture I want to read for you and I'll close John 14 verse 21 and verse 23 this is what will happen and if you receive it you receive it he says he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me say with me because of my love for God I will walk in holiness. I will walk in purity. I choose to walk away from sin because I love God. Did you get that? All right. It is he who loves me. And he says, and he who loves me will be loved by my father. So this must be another love that is different from for God so loved the whole world. It's a different love. If you love God, He will love you with a different love. He will love you with, with what is now called an everlasting love. God does not love everyone the same. It's not true. Jacob, Esau, have I hated? Jacob, have I loved? Ah. So God has favorites. May you become a favorite of God by giving your whole heart unto God. He says, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's Jesus manifesting himself to you. Verse 23 is another level. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And we, no longer I, will come to him and make our home with him. So God, the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, do you know where they live? They live in the houses of God lovers. By this verse, 
there can be no more demonic activity in your home no 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 demons cannot continue to dwell in your house witches can no longer just treat your house like it's traffic no no when i become a lover of god the father the son and the holy spirit they promise to come and live with me and if they come and live with me witches have to go wizards have to go demonic powers have to go sickness has to go poverty has to go hardship has to go oppression has to go diseases have to go i speak that over your life as you become a lover of god i declare your problems must disappear These scriptures, they sum up the whole sermon. Hallelujah. Have we been blessed? If you've been blessed, clap your hands for Jesus. Oh, I know that this word was better than that clapping you are doing. These are mysteries in the kingdom. I believe that this is a game-changing mystery. Galatians 5, verse number 6 says faith works by love so love is the battery that makes the remote control of faith work so if I have no love my faith is not going to work and without faith it is impossible to please God so it goes to say, without love, it is impossible to please God. Because faith works by love. So how has the devil been messing up our lives? By messing up our love walk because of grudges. So when we come to God in prayer, we come supposedly in faith. So if we have grudges, those prayers don't work. Because prayer needs faith to work. When we bring our offerings, again it is an act of faith. So our giving is not working because there is no love. So our faith is disabled. Master, back to Matthew 22 where I started. Verse 36 to 40. Which is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all of your might. Hello? Then he says, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then he says something profound. He says, on these two principles hangs all principles. Ah, what are you saying? So in other words, any principle that I activate and I don't have love is not going to work. Because principles, they work by faith. And faith works by love. If you don't correct your love walk with God, there's nothing that you will do in the kingdom that is going to work that is why loving God and loving people, those are the two greatest commandments.